Whose idea was that? Email the chamber boy. I think I'm going to be in a conference. I'm going to be in a conference. I'm going to be Oh, is the, is the, is the live stream been switched on? Is, is town hall stream switched Thank on? you, Mr. McGinn. Let's get some more live stream. It's just about six o'clock. We're going to give them a minute for town hall students to come on. Um, since we do have a forum, and I'm sure Heidi is probably on her way because I have not heard from her, but we do have a forum. So we'll give her a little bit of time while we're waiting for the camera to come on. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, everybody else, for being prompt. <laughs> Our Santa Claus is here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With gifts and bells on. I shaved my beard, so I must be an elf, right? Yeah. <laughs> Cut it down. Uh, beat Heidi by 30 seconds. <laughs> you don't have a two hour. Through <laughs> chemo, right in the middle, every time. I can't tell. Did anyone else see? I don't think that's yeah, I don't think it's on yet. It's like that watch spot when we're watching it. Yes. How are you feeling? Very good. Yeah, you look good. Yeah. Vertical is better than horizontal. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. Okay. The light is on. The light is, the light is on. The light is on. So if we're, if we're all set, with that being said, um, the Hillsborough Deer, Hillsborough Deer School Board meeting, Monday, February 19th, um, it's live streamed to Town Hall Streams. That can be accessed at townhallstreams.com and also audio streamed. Um, actually, I don't know if we have that. So the audio of the speakers. So the audio. Okay, the audio. Is the audio set up? I think it's the box. Oh, I have the box, I have the microphones, and I didn't have the other, the rest of it. Oh, um, yeah, it's not here. Okay. So, okay, so we'll just, we've got townhouse streams, and we also have a pilot of the owl in this room as well. Um, so we'll continue. Um, we do have a quorum, so we'll call. And the, the owl is the new audio-visual recording oh, yes. system for everything that we will eventually have. Yeah, I'll have more explanation yes. coming. I didn't mean to we're use the acronym. Both, we're using both until we are absolutely certain that the new system works the way that it needs to. The way, yeah. Um, so, so again, I've already announced it as recorded. So please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And I will make an administrative note. I just noticed that they should be staged right, so we were on the wrong side, and we will make that correction with the setup in the future. Um, so moving forward is school, the Hillsborough Deering School Board norms, which are on page two of our packet, um, which is to assume good intentions, being present and prepared and communicating effectively. And so school board members, anyone else that's looking at the packet can take a look at those as far as how we're conducting our meetings. And moving on into um, recognitions. And we do have some recognitions. We do have, we do have some recognitions this evening, but we wanna start um, by asking Chief Parsons to come forward, um, who is going to be accepting 
a recognition on, on behalf of Rosie Dufield. So Rosie Dufield is the crossing guard um, that has been here for Hillsborough during schools for a very long time um, and with us. And if you will, the board will remember, uh, we had a member of the public come uh, a few a few meetings ago uh, and share with the board a particularly impressive uh, incident that they wish they witnessed with, with Rosie. Um, so she was invited to be here tonight. She's not able to join us, but we wanted to, we're going to be presenting her with her certificate of appreciation for all of her many years of service um, and the things that she's done. And we also have a Hillcat sweatshirt for her um, so that <laughs> as soon as it is no longer really, really cold, we'll be, she'll be able to wear her Hillcat gear um, as our crossing guard. She does a wonderful job for all of the students and for the community, and we are very grateful for her. So. <laughs> Well, know that you missed her. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for Chief Parsons coming. So just so a little bit of, of context with of all of that, that um, Rosie is an employee of the police department, um, but has been with us uh, here and in helping us do that for quite a long time. So thank you so much for coming on her behalf. Thank her for her service day in and day out. And it was that one it was that one circumstance that the person from the public noticed and he wanted her to be called out, but I'm sure she does it every day. And in this situation, she almost he put the the direct quote from him was it seemed like she was putting her life at risk, which is being able to get those the kids out of the way as well as the parent, um, so that they were safe from the car that was passing by. So thank you. Thank you for passing that on to our wall. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. And then I do have a handful of um, staff and student recognitions for, for this evening. Um, at the elementary school, uh, Kaya Hammersmith, Nicole Catrone, and Maureen Belgrade, uh, they have joined us mid-year as para-educators and have been incredible additions to the team working in the REACH program. Welcome and thank you for all that you do. Tanya Whitman and Megan Willett are both teachers here at the elementary school. Tanya switched gears mid-year to take over the role of special educator in the ABLE program after Megan took over her new role in the preschool. Both these educators have done a phenomenal job managing these switches and are incredible assets in their new roles. Thank you. And then Terry Carson, who is our newest first grade teacher. Terry took the open visit first grade position uh, as a mid-year switch. She has done a wonderful job helping those students transition to a new teacher mid-year. She is an extremely get dedicated teacher, and Hillsborough Deering Elementary School is lucky to have her. And then for student recognitions, uh, at, from the lower elementary school, we have two students. The first one is Waylon Ostertag, who is a preschool student. Waylon is a wonderful friend who demonstrates kindness and caring to his fellow classmates. Waylon always follows directions and puts forth his best effort in all that he does. And Harrison Stiff. Harrison is a hard worker and has shown tremendous growth this year. He's taken ownership of his learning and has made great progress with reading. He is helpful in the classroom and has a caring heart toward others. In Upper Elementary School, we have Parker Raymond. Parker is always kind, caring, and helpful to his classmates. He always challenges himself in his academics and participates in class discussions. The middle school, we'd like to recognize Holly Hartgreaves, who is in eighth grade, for designing the school logo for the music department concert polo shirts. And then finally, at the high school, the high school would like to recognize all of the DECA students that attended the state competition last week. We are so proud of their accomplishments. The following students earned medals in their events. Julianne Levere for hotel and lodging management. Peter Bean for human resource management. Jack Hebert for retail merchandising. Jack Harrington for entrepreneurship. And Mason for Florida for entrepreneurship. Uh, Eva Contreras earned a medal and received a plaque for being third place in the state for marketing communications. 
And then the following students also received plaques for their overall final placement in the state. Noah Harrington, second place, New Hampshire Hospitality and Tourism Operations Research Event. Leanna Swerko and Phoebe Insulin, third place for Project Management Business Solutions. Isabel Swerko, third place, New Hampshire Project Management Career Development. And Kylie Urban, Alyssa Spencer, Alicia, Alicia Spencer, Caitlin Franklin for first place in New Hampshire for franchise business plan. So an excellent showing all around from the DECA students. And I believe that there are a number of you that are headed to the international competition. I think my school board report, but it's 14 of us. We have 14 of us qualified for the international competition. Fantastic job. So well done. And that is what I have for recognition. We'll hear more of that too, and I'm sh and I I'm not going to take too much of Mason's thunder too, but they did an awesome job at, at the competition, and I'm sure they'll do a great job at, at the, the competition coming up too. It was nice to see so much Hillcat pride, and them, they're just doing well, regardless of whether or not they win or lose. They they're able to do well, um, and and seeing students from other schools as well. And so, there was a lot of winning. There was, yeah, I know we don't brag too much. Um, so, and, and everybody else did a nice job too. And thank you for um, recognizing those who do things every day in our community. Um, so, for correspondence, I have one in my hand, and I don't know if we have anything else. Um, came from a community member in Deering, and it was addressed um, to the entire board, even though it was sent to the SAU. Good morning, Honorable School Board. I'm writing in hopes to see some changes moving forward. First, I want to say that we may disagree on many things, but that's the beauty of our country. I feel that the community would benefit if moving forward, the deliberative session was was held during was held during the day on Saturday. Many people have had a hard time making and staying for a meeting on a work night. Also, as much as the slides are great for those that have an understanding of what's happening. They fail to paint the picture for those who are not fully educated on the workings of the budget. So if possible, it would be nice to have some slides that break it down Barney style. And, and that's the way he put it in the letter. Um, I feel it's paramount for people to understand the information that they are being presented and not just go and vote blindly. Again, thank you for all that you do. I know that many times you feel like punching bags for the voters Please know that even though I may disagree on many things, I do respect all that you do for our community. Respectfully, Don Mann the third, hearing taxpayer. So we'll enter that into correspondence. And is there any other correspondence this evening? No, I do not have any other correspondence. And we are up to presentations and yes. So I would like to ask Anna Muncy, who is the nutrition services director, and Alex Gasparini, who's the high school science teacher, to come up and they are going to present the greenhouse project. Um, and then Grant is going to talk to you a little bit more about that later on in the superintendent's report. So Paul, I don't know if you want to swing around so that you can you can see they've got some, some really cool stuff to share. You want us to use the microphone, this one? Yeah, you can use that microphone. See, uh, I had the foresight. I knew they were doing something. It's not working on this one. Yeah, I think it That's does. You can just talk right into it. There's a little switch on the bottom. I think I turned it on right. There's a switch. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it's on. Weekly shower. Hello? Oh,
You see all these chicken things? Yeah. 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 I can operate this one. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. I'm very excited for you all to see what they have to share tonight. Yeah. If we're blocking something, just tell us to me. Uh, so we're going to go through um, the proposed greenhouse project and uh, the different information um, about the greenhouse. So we'll talk about the specific site that's selected, the plan structure, um, the breakdown of the cost for the greenhouse itself, and then the uh, educational applications and the potential for the greenhouse. And so um, this is not exactly like the images that we're using are not exactly what the greenhouse will look like because uh, every greenhouse is a little bit different. So there's for when we're looking at a greenhouse of this size. Um, so the one that we're going to talk about would be similar to this. Um, but just note in some of the pictures we're showing you images that are the closest that we can to what the structure itself would look like. Thank you. So the project site that we have selected after looking on the campus, this is Hillcat Drive when you come up. So this is the high school. This is at Red Barn. So the path uh, would kind of be like if you have the sidewalk, you would walk over. Um, and up in this area, which is kind of like up on the field, we selected this site because it's uh, currently kind of an underutilized spot. But there's a lot that is going on at this site. So uh, the ropes course is in this area, in the wooded area, and then there's a disc golf course that starts on um, the first tee is kind of here and it goes around. Your mic's um, not working. My mic's not working? Yes, not here. Am I just not talking loud enough? Okay. That's a little bit better. Okay. Uh, sorry. Um, so, and this site also gives us access to uh, any of the utilities that would be needed for the greenhouse. It also gives room for potential expansion in the future. So if there were ever groups or anything that wanted to increase different gardening, spa gardening spaces, we would have that option in this area. There's currently a few things that are in the area, but those will be uh, moved to, to a different location moving forward. So this is uh, roughly the actual like size and dimension. So it'll be the 20 by 60 structure. And, um, this specific area. So that just kind of gives you a frame of reference for the actual size of it. So like I said, the actual structure will look something like this. Um, so it is a greenhouse, they call it a Matterhorn. So it has like the pointy tap. Uh, it's gonna be 20 feet by 60 feet in size. It will accommodate 10 different um, large working bench stations within the greenhouse that multiple students will be able to work at at a time. One of the walls of the structure will be what we are calling the window wall. So if you can see from the picture up before and from this picture, this isn't fully transparent. You can kind of see through it, um, but the window wall will be a more clear wall. Uh, so it'll allow for you to see inside of it from the side of the greenhouse that's going to have more foot traffic. So you can see the projects going on uh, and you can kind of get more of a picture in it and you can see out of it well. It will have automatic ventilation built into it. So that means that it's going to regulate the temperature, which helps us like with plants. Um, and so it helps for plant health so that it doesn't ever get too hot or too cold. But it also helps for the people that are within the structure because um, I don't know if you've ever stood in a greenhouse if it's like 100 degrees, but uh, that's not exactly comfortable so it'll help for people and plant comfort and that works um, for both seasons so there's heating for in the winter months and then there is a shade cloth and ventilation that opens up to allow air to move out uh, in the summer months to help with cooling the structure <clears throat> So the, um, and Alex will talk a little bit more about this in a few minutes. So for the actual structure itself, uh, what is included in this quote is that the actual like steel that's like American manufactured steel, the polycarbonate walls, which includes both type of polycarbonate. So the more opaque and the more like see-through transparent polycarbonate. Uh, it has doorways. So uh, one thing that wasn't in the pictures that I don't really have a good picture of is like it has a roll-up door. So we'll be able to pull up a vehicle to unload stuff or that kind of thing. Uh, but then also just regular doors and all of those are ADA compliant. <laughs> It will have a ground covering, so the actual like substrate or flooring of the structure will be a, it's like a ground cloth fabric material. So that helps to control for weeds um, and for cleanliness so that uh, 
you can clean up after you do certain things and then we don't have any like plant hazards of um, like weeds growing up or anything like that. That includes all of the ventilation, so the exhaust vents, the fans within the structure that allow the hot air to move around when we're heating it and that allow um, the air to circulate out whenever it needs to be cooled and the shade cloth. That includes the engineered stamp plans um, and the freight for transporting the structure onto the site. So a couple of images to go through just to give you an idea of um, what some of these things look like. Again, these are from some of the site visits and from um, different people that we've touched base with in this process of um, coming up with this quote. So these are some of the mounted bands. So they're located throughout on the top. So that helps to move heat around and keep it down when we're heating it and to move air out of the different vents that are throughout of it. When uh, So this is like a wall vent. So to help move the hair out in the summer when it's too hot and you need to reduce the temperature so we don't have cooked little plants. So on from the exterior, this is showing two different things. We have the vented walls, um, and this also, uh, and I think the next picture shows it a little bit better, it shows the window wall. So what I'm talking about how the one wall will be more transparent instead of opaque to allow for people to, be, to see in better for what's going on. And this is a picture of a shade cloth in a structure that we visited. So uh, you can, it's a little tough to see because it's, it's a little train like you can see through it some but the shade cloth is exactly what it sounds like it's a big cloth that you put up once in the spring and you take it down once in the fall and it is a very effective way at reducing the temperature within the greenhouse it makes a significant difference for your comfort level in those warmer months and now i'm going to hand it over to alex all right, so these are some of the other costs that we anticipate um, getting our greenhouse structure started. Um, so it's really more so about making it more of a workable classroom space as opposed to it just being a industrial space. So that includes having whiteboards that we can run lessons in there, uh, pots, flats, and trays that we can actually start growing and, and um, implement, implement projects across all the schools in Hillsborough Deering, um, gardening soil, sprayed sets, trowels, seeding tools, hoses because you need water and being able to water um, the plants we're going to be growing inside of the greenhouse as well as a watering hose nozzle so see, these are just some of the things that um, we anticipate needing up front and they are covered through title five activity funding <clears throat> So we are already doing some really fantastic things in our district, um, and we see the greenhouse as being a way to enhance some of those things. So some of the current lessons and um, activities that we already have going on in the district, in the elementary school, we have the elementary school garden. Second grade has implemented a carrot project. Uh, fifth grade has done a producer to consumer project. Um, then we also have our grade level gardens that are being utilized. The middle school has an after school gardening club as well as some raised beds and um, a middle school garden and then at the high school we're doing a variety of things in our biology course uh, we focus on where um, mass from a plant comes from and we've already run um, some experiments in the classroom in our botany course we're focused on growing cr uh, food crops for a home garden we just started that in our botany course um, in our environmental science course we do um, an investigation into native wildflower species our genetics course that's led by um, our chemistry teacher uh, looks at pea plant crosses and then GMO seeds versus uh, organic seeds. We also have our intro to foods course and our ongoing um, life science projects uh, that are taken on by um, our extended learning opportunity students as well as kid adventures. <clears throat> so we're looking to expand learning opportunities with this new structure. Um, so within our botany, biology, and environmental science courses, we're looking for more outdoor, hands-on learning, as well as just having way more space to grow a lot of the things we're looking to grow with students, um, as well as getting them outside and having a space, a landing zone for us to be able to do those lessons. Um, <clears throat> we think in the future, a horticulture and agriculture course would um, expand a lot of learning opportunities within our already um, established farming community. Um, we would like to expand our intro to foods courses by incorporating growing foods as well as using the foods that you grow within the course. Um, <clears throat> we have many uh, extended learning opportunity projects that students are already taking on. We think that the uh, greenhouse will add to that, um, as well as the grade level gardens at the elementary school and the community garden at the, uh, at the middle school. 
that'll give them space to start their seeds, uh, not just in the classroom, but in an actual space that's meant to be growing those uh, plants, as well as um, cross-building collaborations. It would be really great if I could collaborate with the middle school and the elementary school with my botany classes and my environmental science classes and biology, bringing our elementary school and middle school students up and doing something together. <clears throat> To continue, um, we see uh, uh, the greenhouse as a way to expand the farm to school program and opportunities. We would like to expand the composting in the cafeterias and on campus, as well as taste and sample gardens. So for example, being able to grow a lot of the things that would go into a salsa and being able to taste that, showing students where their food is coming from and then be, uh, allowing them to be able to taste it. Um, <clears throat> Uh, we'd also like to uh, start a pollinator and native species garden, which would be in collaboration with the New, uh, New Hampshire Fish and Game, as well as managing some of the invasive species remediation efforts again with um, New Hampshire Fish and Game. To give you an example, we do a tick project in uh, my botany classes, um, and one of the uh, ideas as a way to remediate some of the tick populations that we have on campus was to start growing plants that ticks don't like, and then line our trails with those plants, which I thought was a pretty cool idea. Um, so this is what, again, this is not what it would actually look like. This is sort of a, this is what, when we went and visited some of the greenhouses, this is what our tables will look like, as well as uh, workspaces for students. So I want to look exactly like this, but something like this on the inside. And then this is a, a picture of what the window wall might look like from the outside. Imagine this pollinator garden, these sort of this, painting this picture, this inspiration. Um, I think it'd be really cool. Which, cut out? which school is that? This is this is Pembroke Academy. People have like a frame of reference. This is a local New Hampshire high school, um, not a commercial place. Yeah, so they they use this throughout the school year and it was very well utilized within um, in this space. This is what the window wall might look like from the outside once we build up the pollinator garden around it. Any questions? Your location is next to an active baseball diamond. Is that correct? No. It appears that way. <laughs> so that there is a baseball diamond up there that is not utilized. Um, the baseball field is actually the one that is utilized is actually. Well, that would be my question. How, how is the wall going to deflect fall yeah. balls? So that baseball diamond is not in use. Um, unfortunately, you know, after it was put in, we discovered that it is positioned all wrong for many of the things that need to happen. And the actual varsity baseball field is down here between the middle and high school. Um, so that is not in use. It, it, that, that's not the football practice field, is it? Football practice field is on the other side of where it looks like there's a baseball diamond. So, but part of part of the reason the like area where the greenhouse is going to be is is up above. It's not all flat and level, which is part of what you needed for runoff as well, right? Yeah, we had originally picked a different spot, but due to like runoff from those fields, we felt if we're going to be growing food and potentially in the future things that students will be tasting, we didn't want any chemicals. It gets it up above and, yeah. and away from that, but no no baseball as a hazard. Mm -hmm. What was that? Or from the parking lot, yeah. Like, you have a follow-up? Follow yeah, I have another question. For Fresca gardeners, okay, what kind of uh, botany plants are you recommending to get rid of ticks and fleas? Because <laughs> I have three dogs in a garden. So some of the plants that my students were looking into were different types of mints, which we don't really want to introduce into the environment because they're super, uh, they spread really fast, but something in the mint family because ticks don't like to be on those like very fragrant plants. Well, that's time for my four allergic pets. But my <laughs> two allergic pets, I got poison ivy all back that takes care of them. <laughs> Any other questions? Um, who is going to be responsible for summer, vaca oh, summer and vacation care? So part of um, one of the reasons that we did some of the site visits and we concluded we included uh, the facilities director on the site visits was to ask that very question for other schools um, and for other locations of how they handle that. And so for uh, looking into and planning out the structure, we've worked really closely with the facilities director, um, past and current, in answering those questions of when it needs upkeep, the shade cloth when it needs to be put up and taken down and so forth. Um, 
who would be doing that and how we would build that into the facilities, uh, like responsibilities. Okay, um, so we really should nail that down beforehand. And two, um, in terms of the cost, because that's just for the facility cost of the greenhouse, um, have you already done a cost analysis for supplies, um, the soil, plants, seeds, all of the other things beyond just the physical plant? Yes, and that's part of what the Title V funds okay. are going to be used for. And so uh, all of all of those things are, we can purchase with those Title V funds to get it going. And so that project can be started. Have we worked with um, like local vendors like Agway or, or anybody to have we talked to those local companies to see if we can come up with an agreement there? The we're not, just got we're out. not there yet. We're okay. Not yet, but what we Hi, have, uh, I would Hi, hopefully suggest. Hold on, just, just hold on. And so, yeah, we're working on that. I mean, but it's kind of, um, you know, one thing at a time. But also, there's a lot of opportunities for um, just expanding this in a lot of different directions. So we kind of reference, we use the term farm to school, and then we put in the New Hampshire Fish and Game. And so, like I know through the New Hampshire Fish and Game and the, and the uh, UNH Cooperative Extension, there are seed programs and that, um, so whether it's for the pollinator garden or for the vegetables. And so uh, we've kind of looked on it on that end, but not specifically with the local blenders just yet. Excellent. What we have been able to do, though, is get an approved grant through through the Title V grant, so that we know that there is. No, we're not, not we're not looking floor. to do that later. We know that it's there, and then you can plan the the That's actual awesome. down to the brass tacks in a little bit. Okay. Uh, what I want to say, Heidi, was Agri got bought out by Bruce Hill. Yeah. Oh, I know that. Yeah. But I was just saying local yeah. vendor connections. Uh, is this going to be a drop floor? No. The flooring in the greenhouse will be like a soil or dirt that has a type of ground cloth that is made for this over the top of it. And so that will help with weed suppression, which helps to make sure that the plants that we are planting stay healthy. So it helps to like reduce fungus and molds and weeds and so forth. But you can also clean it. It also helps ensure the accessibility of the yes. structure for all of our students. Yes. Um, I appreciate the presentation. I think it is a just a wonderful like opportunity and resource for students. But I just have some questions around um, when you did your site visits or when the, the building of it was explored. Um, did we look into you know what the expected propane use is on any given year or what the electricity cost is to run the fans and the longevity of the greenhouse itself? Like do they warranty that product? Um, so just sort of like the life expectancy and the additional cost to actually have it outside of the plants. Yes, so we did ask those questions for the different sites that we visited. The issue that we ran into for having a very direct answer to that question is that if you notice in the structures that we looked at and in many of them that were recommended to us to go see, they're all connected to a building, which means that it is very difficult to separate out those and difficult slash not possible to separate out some of the utility like differences of what's going to the building versus what's going to the greenhouse itself. And so uh, we have asked those questions and we have gone through to work to get those answers. But I do not have the utility answer right now. Grant has some additional information to talk with you about when when he gets to his portion, which is more the finance aspect of it. And then I just one more question around is, did you find any rules on the fertilizer use and the consumption of the food? Like, so, go ahead, sorry. Oh, I was gonna say, um, but for the second part of the previous question, for the upkeep for the structure, so there's the facilities piece that I mentioned, but also when we talked, I mean, so how old was the greenhouse at Pembroke? About 20 years old. Yeah, it was built. I think it yeah. maybe it, it was. Yeah, I think it was. It was older than that. Yeah. They set a date that was in the 90s, um, and it was kind of funny because. Uh, I was like, how many panels have you had to replace? And the response was, well, when we built this, we were instructed to buy a pallet of extra panels to replace ones that are broken, and we've yet to open a single box. Uh, and theirs is really heavily used. And so they're built well, um, they're made to last, and they're, they're built for farmers who don't have the time and money for continual upkeep. And so um, they, they, they're, 
they last and the materials that are used are being used because they're known to last because of the majority of the people that are building these structures. These are see-through, but this is not like window glass. No. Okay. It's a polycarbonate, um, correct? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's polycarbonate plastic. Um, so like a plastic material that's pretty durable. And then, um, oh, I got to check. Fertilizer. Fertilizer. Uh, so in terms of um, planting things for consumption, yes, there are specific regulations in what would go into planting something and then students turning around to eat it. And so it's significantly more than just looking at the fertilizers and so forth that go onto the plants, but it's completely manageable and there's a lot of schools that do it. I went to a training last year that was invited to through the USDA that focused on it a lot. And um, the USDA is working because they want more um, of these taste gardens and they really want to do a lot to connect students to where their food comes from because there's so many benefits from that. But that's kind of one of the issues that they're seeing is that if people don't know how to go from that point A to point B appropriately, um, then they're not going to do it. And so, yes, we've looked into that and a lot of the guidance and um, what would need to happen at various different levels to make sure that that process goes well and is safe. Well, did you have a question first before Heidi or Mike goes again? I just want to know about the power requirements. Are you, you're, you're going to have your own power. You're going to daisy chain off the high school. Where are you getting your power? I can help with that. Um, they're they're running a service strictly for the greenhouse, so it's going to have. Like, don't quote me on it, but I think it was a. I'm not going to say the amperage, but the amperage was set up for expansion too. So. So the they're going they to put a pole out there, right? And they're going to run their own power? Correct. It's going to be their own power source. You get back up to that power in case the fans die? Mm, yes, that's going to go off the generator. Yeah, but the high school. you got a generator? They have one at the high school, correct. So it's back up right yeah. off the... Gas, propane? It's a diesel. Oh, uh, diesel, really? Right. The, gen the generator's diesel, diesel, but the... Yeah. Yeah. With your father being the electrician, oh, that's how you have the information. Yeah, so, I'm correct. Just, yeah. So and I think Grant will probably have more information on that too mm -hmm. during his portion too. Um, yeah, a li little bit. I mean, some of it's probably still, you know, we're still figuring some of that out, I imagine. But you know, mm -hmm. they're all good questions too. And I think it sounds like what, you know, what Mason was I saying too. I my dad's quote. That's, so <laughs> yeah. well, first hand, third party information. <laughs> was, there, was there anything you were going to add to that? I should say the heat source itself for the greenhouse structure would be propane. And I think the diesel is the exactly. generator that's for the high school. Um, the site work is that done by the builders of the green work, the greenhouse. Is that included in the cost of the greenhouse, or is that a separate contract company? I'm sure Grant might have more information about that, but it's so it's a separate site work because they have to prepare the site for the greenhouse. So I was curious. Sometimes, you know, if you build a shed, they'll do that. The, the bottom of it too. Back on the fertilizer, I think you might have mentioned this and maybe you didn't. Um, I imagine with the fertilizing, is there an aspect that students can get involved in learning how to do composting? Did yeah. you hear a conversation that we were having before we started this while we were waiting for everybody to No, I can, uh, maybe I did. I'll, 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 I'll take that one. I mean, ideally we would not see a single chemical used in um, the greenhouse because we know, what was that? Well, har yes, harsh chemical. We don't want to see any harsh chemicals. We know, <laughs> like based on just scientific evidence, that it's harmful for our youth to be exposed to, um, you know, some of the chemicals, herbicides, pesticides that uh, we spray on our conventional food crops. Um, so we would like to show students how you can grow food without using those um, harsh chemicals. So by, um, you know really ramping up our composting program here at the um, in the district, but also having our own dedicated compost at the, the greenhouse to show students, you know, the multiple stages in which compost takes before you actually can use it. That's where all three buildings can get involved with that at some level, I imagine. 100%, yeah. That's also an opportunity for, you know, cross-building collaboration as well. The other question I was going to ask too was just, I think you kind of was talking about as far as the things that will be, the things that will be happening, there'll be a lot in the winter months when you can't get into the greenhouse that can be done too, I imagine, correct? Yeah. It was prep like, probably like now. Yeah, we would look, we would want to be able to use this all year round. And that's, I mean, that's one of the 
big huge things for the educational opportunities from this is right now like we listed the current projects that are happening and then we said some of the areas that we can expand things that are already happening or start new things and so for the current lessons that are occurring they're really controlled by how much sunlight you get in your classroom window uh, if you have access to like setting something inside and outside each day um, and just the seasons as they are uh, and if you know like August, the very, very end of August, the beginning of September is an incredibly busy time starting your school year. And then May and June are an incredibly, incredibly busy time while you're kind of going through the end of the school year. And so this allows you to do that second grade carrot project uh, or to do the producer consumer project and not have that timeline. You can do it when it naturally falls in your like lesson plan um, rather than being like dependent on the actual weather. So with that said, in the greenhouse, um, you know, we'll be able to grow a lot of different like plants, whether it's like an herb or flower or vegetable and so forth. Um, but it's not going to, you know, we're not going to grow like an avocado tree in December. Like, I don't, we've got to be realistic. <laughs> <laughs> what can still grow in the area and so forth. Um, but I think that's one of the biggest benefits of this is uh, you can have those lessons any time of the year. And so, people that maybe aren't able to fit those into their plan will be able to moving forward. No pumpkin patches yet. We'll wait a few years <laughs> on that. I'll give you a... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's one of the benefits of that site uh, versus some of the other ones that we looked at because um, there's only so many places that we could put on campus. But one of the huge benefits to us for this site was that there is a lot of potential for expansion of that outside space. And that doesn't mean like you know, more greenhouses. That means like at garden beds, whether or the pollinator gardens and so forth. Um, so I don't know, maybe we can have a pumpkin patch. I'm not making any promises, but it's not a no. Good goal. I would also add like that spot is really cool because it's right by where there's a trailhead. So I mean, I'm envisioning, I, I have this vision. We have this vision of a space where, you know, we can bring students out, we meet up in a classroom, we go up to the greenhouse, maybe we start some seeds, maybe we go out on the trails for the first 20 minutes and we go out and collect wild seeds and then start them in the greenhouse. I mean, there's just so many opportunities and then there's just so many spaces for expansion in this particular area where it'll just start as a greenhouse. But then imagine, you know, the following year we had a pollinator garden, the following year we had an additional more garden plots. It's just the, the ideas are endless, endless possibilities. Endless possibilities. Mm -hmm. Any other questions from the board? Yeah, thank you very much for that presentation. There's lots of information to uh, to give to us and to process. Lots of opportunities and goals. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. And we have um, with us, yeah, the uh, student representatives report next with uh, Mason Perwin. Um, I think I said your last name correct, right? Yeah. So thank you. Is it? I think I can hear myself. I think this thing's on. Um, so to get started with the elementary school, on February 9th, they celebrated their 100th day of school. Kind of crazy that there's already been 100 days of school being a senior. Without senioritis, it's terrifying that there's only 80-something days or 70-something days now left. So that's a little scary. Um, so they celebrated their 100th day of school on February 9th, and they did activities throughout the day in each classroom to celebrate that day. Um, on Valentine's Day, the second grade ran their annual school assembly, and they were fortunate to have a recycled percussion group perform for all of them, so that sounds like it's a lot of fun. This week, the elementary school is doing their annual CARES Carnival. So each day, each class will have a theme to dress up for the week, so that's interesting. Kind of ties in with the winter carnival in the high school and middle school. Always a fun week to have fun school spirit. Um, they have competed or they've completed the mid-year iReady testing. So all the teachers and the data team have evaluated the results and determined their next steps to, for instruction for all the kids in the elementary school. Moving on to the middle school, the boys basketball team hosted and competed in the semifinal playoff game at the middle school gym. That was a really cool atmosphere to be in. They fought really hard and it was nice to see a team from Hillsborough, like middle school seemed like they'd be a very bright team to have together in the high school during the next couple of years. And Mason, as the mom of one of those players, I really appreciate it. And I want to give a shout out to the middle or the high school basketball team who came down to cheer on our boys. And it was packed. It was a packed house. So 
as an addendum, the same, pretty much same team, 7, 8th grade, HYAA hits the semifinals tomorrow, and they are currently 8 and 0. So but they had a great season, and we really loved having the high school kids come down and, and shout out. So I just wanted to tag on that we, we loved that. Oh, definitely. It was nice to see the middle school gym. I know when I went to middle school there, I mean, the basketball games, they're fun, but there wasn't like as many people there. I know I couldn't sit down because the top row was quite standing room only. So that was nice to see like the packed out gym for the boys to support them. Um, the girls cheerleading team came in second in their cheer competition. So that was cool to see that. And then once again, the middle school is doing a winter carnival team day throughout the week. And Mr. Bober said, I think they're doing pajama day. Pajama day tomorrow. day tomorrow. That was, that was first hand information for my son. And I was trying to remember the rest of the week. <laughs> And then brought us into the high school. The high school is underway with our winter carnival challenges. We had our first challenge at the high school with our class champions on February 9th, where we competed in press your luck. Um, so I think juniors came out on top on that one. Sad, sad. But, um, that's always a fun little game to play with everyone. Um, and then the boys basketball team had their senior night. And on the senior night, the JV team won. So that's a win and a progress for the boys basketball team definitely waiting for the seventh and eighth graders to come up to the high school to have a nice basketball team <laughs> um the high school bowling team ended off their season with a win and the season high points a great way to end the year for the bowling team and mr bramley um as mr bober was saying earlier deca competed in the cbc's our career development conference in manchester new hampshire where multiple people meddled in events we also brought home some plaques for also students with the school-based enterprise. So it's nice to see our Hillcat Corner and the school store being recognized at the state level and competing in the international level. We also earned a Thrive plaque, which we have for the last 20 years. So it's nice to see Thrive go through and community awareness that just makes our school look better as a whole. Um, the high school had a dance on Friday the 16th that was also competed in Winter Carnival Points so it was nice to see everyone show up to that, even though there was only 12 seniors that showed up. So our, as you can see, the seniors are in last place in Winter Carnival rankings, so we have some catching up to do. Um, but it's nice to have this week in Winter Carnival theme and seeing everyone excited in the school spirit because it's always nice to have your community back you. So that's my report. Thank you very much. Thank you. Excellent job. Awesome job. It's nice. It's always nice to go to activities as, as a community member as a, or as an adult, um, as a board member. With that, uh, you don't have to be a board member or an educator to volunteer. If anyone wants to help out, you can just say you want to volunteer. They'll find a place for you. It was, it was nice. I, I probably talked to over a dozen alumni from Hillsborough during high school um, who have come back and a couple of them that were judging for the first time. And they just, they had an awesome experience just watching what they were doing a few years back that now they, they get to judge. And they were like, wow, I can really judge what these students are doing. I'm like, yep, you can. So it was, uh, it was awesome to see that interaction. It's awesome to have a lot of pride from Hillsborough there, there as well as our other events. Sports is the same way. So it's great to see that pride coming up the ranks with basketball. <laughs> a lot of great, a lot of good base basketball players in high school. And there's a lot of others in, in the middle school. So it's great to see that. So thank you for your presentation. Um, lots of great stuff going on in, in Hillsborough Daring in the district. So that brings us to um, public comment, um, limited to five minutes per person. And this is an opportunity for members of the public to share an idea or concern with the board. Comments limited to five minutes. And it's not the practice of the board to immediately respond, even though we may on some occasions, if it's a factual, if it's a court response, otherwise we might take it away and get it back. So it, it just before us, just before seven o'clock, six forty-seven. Um, six forty-seven exactly. Um, is there anyone from the public who wishes to speak? So it has been offered, and it will be in the minutes. Going once, twice, three times. And so, yeah, thank you for the help there a minute. We're gonna we're gonna miss that in a few weeks. Um, and uh, and we're coming up on our consent agenda. Is there? We've got. Um, a, a few items, actually two items on the consent agenda. Is, is there a motion to approve um, the consent agenda or would anything, anyone like to pull anything out to be discussed? I have a motion to approve. I just wondered why there were two of these. There are identical things. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to do it. Oh. Okay. 
Yeah, I, I only have. Is it right before the mounts? Yep. It's right only. after the norms. I have two. I think it's just a double copy. Yeah, I really can't see. The dates are the same. The names are the same. <laughs> hey. Actually, I don't think I have one. Okay. Oops. Okay. It was in my electronic version, but I don't think I have it in my hard copy, so. Okay, well then I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Okay. I'll second. All right, and, and so with no more discussion on that, um, uh, any, all those, all those in favor? Aye. 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 And no opposed, no abstentions, so five, zero, zero. Yeah, I just have, I just have one set in mind, so. Um, so moving on, so superintendent's report. All right, um, so. I am going to go out of order a little bit because we do have a guest here with us. So Mrs. Parento uh, is, is here. Um, community member, former superintendent uh, is here on behalf of her aunt. Um, and she is coming to the request that the school board vote to accept a scholarship donation that her aunt would like to make. So I have, uh, you could pass those down. So Mrs. Brenda, did you want to speak to this or would you like me to present it? I know that you, you can. We'd love to have you. Here this is an incredibly generous gift. Yes. Thank you. Miss Broderick, and we appreciate this. But this, did you want to explain what it is? That yes, you? it's very challenging to give money away. Is really what I have learned <laughs> in this whole process. I want to thank Jen and Grant, uh, Michael Boucher, and the Counseling Center for the help that they have given me in putting this together because it is just a, it's a one-time deal. My. Um, my mother was one of the Duggins. I, I'm just going to give a little background on this. And so there were 13 children in that family that moved up from Massachusetts. And there was an article in the paper the year that they came because Windsor was all upset because it doubled the student population of Windsor the year they came. Um, so my Aunt Teresa uh, was the 11th of the 13 children. And she, her, the senior year, as she graduated from Hillsborough during high school, received a scholarship from Keene State that paid for her whole first year tuition and room and board. And so she wanted to be able to pass this on to someone else. So this is what it's about. It's a one year. So it would be for um, a student graduating this year, hopefully going into education is what she would like to have it. And so Jen and I have been working on this and I'm hoping that the board will accept this donation. So what, what this involves is this would be a, a one-time donation for a one-time scholarship that with no intention of continuing it on past the first year. And the Hillsborough Deering School District would ask act as the pass-through entity, which we are able to do through our donation fund. Um, and so the donation would be made to the district with the intention that we would execute this in two payments for the student to Keene State. Um, and so it would bridge a fiscal year um, and then be, be kind of complete. Um, but it is an incredibly generous uh, gift. And, and I would um, request that the board uh, accept the gift on behalf of the senior to be named later. Um, <laughs> Thank you. So, thank you. Thank you so much for coming and for thank working you. with her to put this together. Thank you. Emma. Okay, so uh, that is the, the big piece, the general update right now. Um, I'm going to kind of skip to the, the chase. I don't know if people had a chance to listen to their, their messages. Uh, the high school only will be closed tomorrow. There was a, a mechanical issue. It is being worked on. We fully anticipate that all of that will be um, all of that will be complete tomorrow and we'll be back open on, on Wednesday, but so as to not have to rush that work and be 
worried about having to displace students during the day tomorrow. Middle and elementary school uh, and Washington Elementary School all up running and operating as usual. Are we able to know what the maintenance issue is? Yes, yeah, so there was in the in the boiler room, uh, there was not the boiler, uh, but in the <laughs> room with the, the one of the control panels um, had a electrical fire and we just want to make sure that everything was not large, it was contained. We just want to make sure everything gets tested. Um, this is really an over an overabundance of caution to make sure everything is fine before we repopulate uh, that building. Um, and we're confident that uh, Mr. Nichols and his crew are working with electricians, with Siemens. The fire department was here, and we sh we fully anticipate being able to be up and operational bright and early on Wednesday morning. Um, but the, the alarms and the evacuation worked as as designed, and everyone was safe and will be safe tomorrow. Um, so. Jumping into at this point the grant show. Um, I'm going to ask Grant to come forward and he's going to talk to you about the January financial report. He has an update on the FY23 audit. He has some things about propane he would like to talk to you about. And then also the greenhouse bid recommendation. I really should write say, Grant a theme song. I was going to say, uh, before you get off the board, I think that's a requirement. You need to come up with a theme song for us to use when we have the business administrator. <laughs> and I have one more sparkle for you. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to start with the financial report. Uh, it's probably four or five pages in. You know what the financial report looks like by now. Um, we still have about, what, five months left in the fiscal year because this is the January report. Uh, we do appear to be in good shape, as you can see, um, largely due to vacant positions. We should end a year with a surplus of perhaps a million dollars. Um, and that's not because we've messed up in the budget. It's just that we have an inordinate number of vacancies. I mean, three teacher vacancies off the top of my head, I can think of two math teachers at the high school. Um, so those add up quickly when you have vacancies. 270,000 of that maybe million dollars um, would be available to transfer to trusts if the articles are approved next month. I mean, as we talked about setting those, those three warrant articles are up for vote and if those all pass, then 270 of the surplus would go to a transfer to, to the trusts. Um, I don't have any significant concerns on the revenue side. I know that the report doesn't show revenues, but I did take a look at that and there's nothing significant to report there. Um, I will go over budget adjustments and then run through some of the expense lines real quickly. Um, the fourth column of that report shows budget adjustments. There was only one new budget adjustments, uh, adjustment since uh, last month, since the December report. And it was only for four thousand dollars it was within professional development i think it was a shift from salary to supplies um, but the total for this month in budget adjustments was just four thousand um, dollars salaries are about the first seven rows of the report um, we've encumbered funds for the full year for the existing staff but there's still a balance remaining because of those vacant positions um, I'm estimating in salaries perhaps four to five hundred thousand dollars of surplus. Um, if you look at a few of the specific lines, there's a, a line that says 112, that's for tutors. Um, that is coming in with a large surplus. I don't even know if we've spent anything there because we have the ESSER 3 money for tutors that we're spending down right now. Um, the substitute line, I think that's 120. Um, you'll see that. If you're looking at how much we've spent so far and how much we got left, the substitute line may end up a little over budget due to the need for some long-term subs and also um, having teachers covering classes, like uh, we have math teachers covering for the vacant math positions. So those expenses are popping up. But overall, we should have a large surplus in salaries. Um, benefits are the next 12 or 13 lines, anything that starts with a two. Like salaries, we've encumbered for the full year for the existing staff. I'd say we're probably looking at a surplus of three to $400,000 in benefits. 
Um, skipping a couple lines down, you'll see professional services. Um, we show a large balance, but about half of that is for um, school resource officer services, which we, um, that bill may have come in, uh, but our accounts payable person is in Florida. So I'm not sure, I haven't seen it yet, but about half of that bill, uh, that balance is for SRO services. We should finish fairly close to the budget, but we may have a, a little bit of surplus for like occupational therapy, um, if legal expenses stay low, et cetera. Um, I guess skipping all the way down to the tuition line, 560, um, student requirements can change at any time, but as of now, we would end the year with a surplus of about $180,000 in the tuition line. So that's the other big one, the salaries, the benefits, and the tuition. Um, Propane is the 623 line. The entire budget is encumbered, but it looks like we're going to have some surplus. If you look at the actual expenses to date, you'll see that we have a big bunch of the money sitting in encumbrance that we probably won't need to use all of. Um, and I will talk a little bit more about propane in a second. Um, you know, we've had some snow lately, but the temperatures this year overall have been pretty mild, so that helped. Um, software is slightly over budget, but there shouldn't be much, if any, additional expenses. And transfers to trusts, um, that's the 210 for FY23 surplus that goes into trusts. And then there's also 50,000 for the food service transfer um, for, um, for operating losses. And the full amount for transfers to trust has been transferred and we've encumbered the food service amount. So that's it for your financial report. If anybody has any questions, I can try to address them now. Grant, what is the checklist line? 340? It just says checklist. Uh, I believe that has to do with voting. Oh, oh the supervisor's is the checklist? Okay. It's only $500. Yeah, I just didn't yeah. know what it was. <clears throat> but yeah, that's that only exists in one place under the school board, and I assume that's what that is, is for if if anybody makes those requests. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Um, let's see, the next one is not really anything to hand out, but just an update. The FY23 audits, um, I literally just received the FY23 audits. Um, I didn't have time to get them out to you for this meeting, but we will, I will have hard copies and probably be able to send a uh, PDF to you before the next board meeting. Um, but I did want to let you know that that's all been completed um, and there's, uh, everything came out very well and not to spoil the surprise, but there were zero findings. So it was a clean audit this year. Well done, Grant. Yeah. Very nice job. Well, Paul, are you not excited? No. <laughs> February 19th, and we have in our possession a completed aud audit with no. There must be something no wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, with no Grant yeah. has done an absolutely yes. outstanding job. Yes, of well done. That. Thank you. So we will get that information so you can look at the 40 some odd page audit and if you have questions, oh, wow. we can talk about it. Okay. By, by hard copy, <coughs> you'll email it to us I will, post. We will email you a PDF and I will have hard copies at the meeting if you actually want a hard copy. Um, propane update. So what this is about is um, if you look at the amount we pay per gallon and the number of gallons we get per year, you could make the argument that that is a contract over $50,000, which the school board is supposed to approve. So I, I didn't want to just go off and do that, but I also don't think we have, it, it doesn't lend itself to be able to come back to the school board because when it comes to electricity and propane and those kinds of commodities, when you get a quote, it's good for the day. And so it would have to be, I could go back and ask for a couple of different days and wait until I see a good price and I can lock in, but I can't guarantee that that good price is going to be on the day of a school board meeting. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we're going to be asking for the board to discuss and to um, take action on 
is if you would trust me to execute a propane agreement whenever I work with a consultant and find a good price. Like right now we're paying $1.73.8 is what we're paying so i wouldn't lock in unless i could get a better price than that and propane is coming down so um that's what the action item is about to allow me to go ahead and execute that and then i would come back and report to the board what we were able to get so um i just wanted to bring that up um the next one is the greenhouse bid recommendation which is in your packet as well so we Believe it or not, yeah, it's right after the financial report. I think. Um, believe it or not, we and by we, I mean mostly Anna doing the, the work on this. We were able to actually receive three bids for a 20 by 60 greenhouse structure. Um, so this shows the, the breakout. We received three bids. The summary of the bids is on here with three different vendors. The lowest cost was Rymel Greenhouse uh, Systems LLC. So you'll recognize that number from their presentation, the 67457.90. Um, Rymel is the most local of the vendors and their pr proposal is the lowest. So that's why we were going to recommend a motion for someone to make to award the greenhouse contract to Rymel Greenhouse Systems LLC at a cost of $67,457.90. Um, the cost is very close to what we initially estimated. We were thinking maybe it would come in as low as 65, so that's pretty darn close. Um, and the funds are available. Funds were transferred a while back into the maintenance line for this. Um, there's funds there are funds available to also level the, level the ground and prep it and put in footers and install the thing. And um, we're going to uh, dig a well for water so it won't be connected to city water. We will extend um, electrical so that we can get electrical out there. Um, as far as your questions, I can't give you a, a great answer on how much specifically it's going to cost for the electrical and propane to run that, but it's a 20 by 60 structure. It, it's not, it, it's probably not even going to be recognizable as far as the, the cost difference between what we're paying now annually and what we would with adding a 20 by 60 greenhouse structure, um, especially the, um, the electrical because it's really just fans and some lights when you're using it, if you are using it whenever it's not bright enough. Um, a couple of small propane heaters, which don't take use much propane either. Um, and as I mentioned in your financial report, you can see that we, I believe we're under executing both electric and propane on the electric side because we're doing things like putting in variable speed motors, putting in more efficient lighting. So I think that's why we're keeping up with the budget without having to increase the budget in either of those areas. And propane, as I mentioned, I will do my best to try to get a price that's better than what we've got right now. Um, so that, I think, is everything I had. You were going to... Yep. Yes. Yeah. Grant, I just have one question, mostly for clarification for the public. So all of the funds we've already transferred over yeah. from grant funds. Uh, well... Title so, five. What's included in the title five? So what we had, boy, my microphone is not working well. Right. What you we had initially, that can you, because this clock. is breaking. Again, so, this is for the, transparency yep, for the community. The, way, no. the, the greenhouse project was what we had originally intended to use the last part of our ESSER three funds for. And from the very beginning of this, because it aligns with the strategic plan and it aligns with what folks said that they wanted ESSER three funds to be spent on and it goes to student engagement and all of the, the pieces that we had. What happened was, and from the very beginning that was our plan. What happened was that the grant consultants and US Ed, right? Our grant consultants at New Hampshire Ed are or report to folks at, at US Ed. And they decided that additional construction projects at the end of the SR3 performance period, and we're in the last nine months, that they were not, not wanting to approve any additional construction projects, even though it 
met all of the criteria that was allowable and it had been in our plan from the beginning. So several months back, I want to say four, but it may have things start to get wishy-washy for me back there, but several months back we came to and we said the two things that we were looking at was that with some of the funding that we were using in the plan for some of our budget funding was to do professional development around instructional coaching, particularly at the middle school with a West Ed contract. The ESSER rules allowed the West Ed coaching to be paid for out of ESSER. And so what we asked when we asked for the budget transfer several months back was basically to switch those two funding sources and to have the greenhouse project come out of the general fund and the professional development for the instructional coaching come out of the ESSER because it was allowable under ESSER and we wouldn't have run into the potential problem. They didn't say it would definitely happen, but even a chance of it happening, Grant and I were uncomfortable with that being at the end audit two years from now with ESSER having them say that wasn't allowable, you owe us the money back. We didn't want to ever have any chance of that happening. And so that was the, the funding transfer that you approved several months ago. <coughs> now today we're coming to you with this because this is a bid that we needed. We have a single vendor and it's a contract of over $50,000. And when we have a single purchase of over $50,000, our procedures say that we do our very best to get three bids. We got three bids and that the final purchase um, is needs to have board approval because it was over $50,000. What was the amount that we transferred from PD? Wasn't it, um, yeah, it was it, it was just PD. over a hundred um, oh. thousand. So there was enough for this. There oh, was, was enough. The ELA, right. yeah, it, was the, it, it was funding that was originally budgeted at, during the budget process for FY24 for the middle school ELA position, which was unfilled. And then we were looking at using that funding to work with coaching. instructional coaching to help support student okay. learning at the at the middle school. But so it was over 100 k mm -hmm. Yeah, because it was all the salaries and benefits that were available. Um, and we will use more than this, because like I said, we're gonna do footers. Um, we're gonna run electrical out there. We gotta dig a well. Um, but we are confident that we can do all the things we need to do within the amount of money that we have in the general fund. So the, the current, the three uh, vendors. Are you doing bids on the optician well? We will get prices. We, you won't get that. We won't be coming back here because it's not going to be anywhere near the 50,000 threshold. But yeah, for any of that work that's significant, we're going to get three numbers. Yeah. What were the, um, so there's, I see there's a $1,200 difference between Rimmel and Grossman. Was that like apples to apples? They're the same product, same specs? Same specs. I mean, they might have different products, but um, it's <clears throat> like in general, a it's superior product and it's only $1,200 more or? Or is it because it's it hooks it, runs right. and hooks it, so we wanted to go with the New Hampshire vendor? Uh, can you help me out on this one? I think all three of them would have been sufficient or satisfactory to our needs. They all met the needs that we had for a 20 by 60 for the, all of the requirements that we set up. Yeah. The fact that one is lower makes sense to go with and that it's local makes sense to go with. They all would have been sufficient for us. Mm -hmm. um, the one that's 94,000 is probably because that one came out of what was it? So some of that might be attributed to shipping. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. some of that could be. So the unknown costs <laughs> are the propane, the electricity, the site work, <clears throat> how much diesel would be used if the power was out, and the generator from the high school had to run the greenhouse as well, and then the replacement cost if something breaks or... If the generator kicks in, the amount, the percentage of what's being generated by the generator to help cover the greenhouse is like a, negligible a, to the point it would be almost impossible to tell you yeah. how much it is costing. Um, 
and the and the electricity is really the lighting and fans which we i don't think we'll be using lighting very often um because it's probably a lot of that will be during the day and the fans are just two almost like box fan looking things and you're on the furnace uh well that would be propane um and the propane for is it one heater or two just okay. one two um i can't imagine that the amount of propane that we would use would be anything significant okay i imagine too like with the replacement piece too i imagine is there a level of a warranty for anything that would qualify as a warranty item right and and because of the materials as anna said i mean we've looked at other ones and they haven't had the kind of wear and tear it's not like ceiling tiles where you're replacing them all the time um it would literally have to be something significant to break one of those panels and if so it would like could be a property and liability claim if it's something like that and there are no like trees really overhanging up there no I, I, they're pretty far back i, I was going to ask what, what what is the cost of clearing and preparing the land or the site work is unknown this the site work is to some extent unknown the clearing it and leveling it is not going to cost us anything that's been donated effort to clear that up, just to clear it and level it so the site work is really whenever we get to the point where we're having somebody put footers down to be able to put the structure on. But you don't have to worry because you're not putting a concrete pad down or anything like no, that. So no, no, it's just the footers to, to be able to put the the so outside. It shouldn't be that extravagant. No, no, it shouldn't be. If I said a couple thousand dollars, would that be in the ballpark? No. For the footers? Site work well, just site the work? clearing of the site work. And the I, I mean, I would say I, I don't know off the top of my head, but I would I'd be surprised if it's more than like five grand. Okay. I mean, don't hold me to that, please, because I didn't I didn't get that number. I was more concerned about whether or not we're going to actually be able to order the greenhouse. So <laughs> we'll get to that next. And I, I was just going to say, are there any delays right now? Like as far as do they make it on site? Are they all say because they, they it don't took make us almost it. a year to get our garage door. Yeah. So they, they don't make it on site. We, we were assured that when I spoke with them um, at the beginning of February, they still had everything on site to be able to deliver. Okay. Um, that could have changed in the last few weeks, but in all of the times that I spoke with them, they know the timeline. Um, all three vendors were aware of the timeline because that was one of the things that made it difficult. Is I got shut down a few times when I <laughs> said my timeline to take places. So right. that's definitely been part of the conversation. Yeah. And that's what we've been trying to tell everybody: is this all has to be here by June thirtieth because now. It was a shift from the grant funding to general funding, which expires on June 30th. So we needed to have everything here in time. And hopefully it will be. We'll be able to get them a purchase order, hopefully tomorrow, if you approve this. Okay. The goal is to have functional space at the beginning of the new school year. Yeah. So Alex we'll, cannot wait. Well, Alex's yeah. goal is to not set foot in the actual high school for several days in a row. <laughs> <laughs> so June thirtieth is when materials have to be on site. It won't be up yeah. right away. It's going to probably be right by July at least, for sure. Well, I mean, the goal is to try to get it. Yeah, we to get, to get started done. on this long before. Yeah. The end the, of June. The goal okay. is for it okay. to, to to all the stuff to be here much before June thirtieth, right and Build hopefully to get the it the is correct about the <laughs> Four more weeks. <laughs> All right, so anything else for me or any other questions for Grant? Yeah, I mean, all right. Thank you for your, your so work. And switching, well. switching back to me, the last thing for the superintendent's report. So I have an additional task thing that I'm asking for as um, an action item tonight. And this is to increase our per diem rate for substitute nurses. And I want to walk you through the steps of why I am asking for that and how we are arriving at the rate that we are, are asking for. I do want you to know that uh, I went to the Washington School Board with a similar request at their meeting last week and they, they approved that. Um, and part of this overall is we are trying to build up our substitute nursing pool across 
all of the schools in, in the SAU. Um, we have at this point a critical shortage of substitute nurses, which is creates some tremendous strain on our nursing staff. Um, the number of visits that we have to the health offices is in the in the thousands in each building, um, thousands and thousands in in each of the the Hillsborough Deering building. So, um, for nurses, in order to be a substitute nurse at a, in the schools, you need to be a registered nurse. That is an RN. That is a degree holding um, certification. So that is important to understand you lpns and lnas um, can be very helpful but they cannot perform the duties that are necessary as a registered nurse uh, we have a number of things that nurses can that can only be delegated to nurses that need to be done daily for our students on campus um, substitute teachers on a day-to-day -day substitute, we do not require substitute teachers to hold teacher certification or licensure. However, if somebody were to be a long-term sub for a classroom teacher, then that is required for them to hold a teaching license. Um, and because of that, that was the equivalency that we used when we looked at increasing the substitute rate for, for nurses. What we are looking to attract are RNs that already are employed and licensed in the state of New Hampshire that would be willing to basically come in and pick up a day here and there on days that they're not already um, doing a shift at their hospital or, or clinic. Um, so for teachers, the per TM rate for long-term subs is based on the teacher's contract pay scale, and it's the bachelor step one, and we use that to calculate the per diem rate with 190 work days. And that's how a long-term sub for teachers is, is chosen. For nurses, the lowest step on that same, they are on the same uh, pay scale as teachers, but the lowest step or the first step that a nurse could conceivably be hired on is bachelor step three. And the reason for that is because they need three years of pediatric experience in order to be uh, a school nurse, a full-time school nurse in the state of New Hampshire. Um, you don't need that in order to be a substitute nurse, but it was our best equivalency. So we used bachelor step three as our calculator. Um, and then I rounded up a dollar 97 or I think 96 cents uh, to it. So looking at that, what I'm asking you to do is increase the per diem rate for substitute nurses from the current rate of $150 a day to a rate that's calculated using the bachelor step three step which is two, moves it up to $265 a day. I know for a fact that we have a handful of nurses in the community that have already expressed interest at that new rate that would not and are not able to do it at the $150 a day rate. We're basically asking somebody to take their day off from work and come in. Um, also looking at what the current per diem rate is for our nurses. So again, if you took their full salary and you divided it out what it is, um, this is our nurses all make more than, than this amount, amount per day. It's really important to us that we're not paying somebody to come in and be a sub and paying them more than we, we pay our full-time employees. Um, but we are looking to help alleviate um, the strain on the nursing staff by doing this. We also did a calculation based on the last five years of absence data on the nurses across all of the buildings. So that's what I was just going to ask. So, um, so without there being, I think things through, without there being um, extraordinary circumstances, but but basically um, the the nurses, the, the typical amount of time that a nurse needs to spend out of the building and requires substitute nursing coverage in a given year is roughly seven and a half days. And so that includes professional days, personal days, and sick time that they, they take. It is unusual for employees in the district to take all of the allotted sick time that they have available. The contract does give them more than that, but it's typically around seven and a half days per, per, nurse. per nurse that they That's would nurse. need to be out of the building. Uh, Grant and I did the numbers with the substitute salaries that, that we have, and, and again, 
accepting for an extraordinary set of circumstances, you. you know, like a, a, a leave time or a maternity leave or, or something like that in a typical year, this would not require us to, to make a hefty increase to the substitute lines um, to cover it but it would give us the opportunity to have nurses on campus. I cannot express how um, critical it is to have a registered nurse in each of the buildings um, at this time. There was a time not that many years ago, just a handful, where that was not necessarily the case, but the acuity of need um, that we have with our students right now requires that. Um, in order for students to be safe and, and able to be here. Um, and so that that is a, a thing that is very different than it was just a few years ago. Does anybody have any questions about what the, the ask is or how that number was, how we derived that number for $265 a day? How many hours are talking? One or more. So we have on the Hillsborough Deering campus three RNs. Um, and so this would be the pool of folks that can serve as substitutes for them if they need to be to be out. Uh, oh, an additional piece of information. We did look at what it would cost to go through a contracting agency. Uh, first of all, none of the nurse contracting agencies are really terribly interested in day-to-day in -day work. They're looking, travel nurses at this point can um, can get a gig pretty much anytime they want, anywhere they want. Um, but the minimum um, dollar figure uh, for those would be $95 a day, which pushes us up almost just under 800 bucks a day uh, would be the per diem rate if we were using a contracting agency. Seven seventy-six. Other questions? This is just to, just to hopefully pull a few more people into the into the pool of likely candidates, make it attractive for folks. Again, basically what we're doing is asking people to give up their day off to come and, and do this work for us. Okay. So um, yeah, the, those are the, the couple of, of outside of the usual realm of things, looking for action items with, uh, to approve the increase in the nurse substitute rate to $265 a day, to accept the scholarship donation um, from Teresa Duggan Broderick, um, and to approve the bid um, for the greenhouse, and to authorize grant to go out and find you a favorable propane rate. Okay. That's okay. all I have for today. Thank you. That was uh, just a few items on the list. And thank you for everything that you do and the things on the slide. Uh, the high school for that. So board discussion. Um, jumping into the first item on the list is uh, greenhouse bid. Do, do we have any further? We, we asked um, the questions in the presentation, and Grant and Superintendent Jen gave us information. Um, on that, do we have specific, specific more questions or discussion amongst ourselves in terms of uh, what we're thinking in terms of that? I don't have any more questions. Um, I just, for me, this is part of the role of school board where we're balancing what's best for students, but also being a responsible taxpayer. And for me, there's just too many unknowns. Um, the term I imagine was used for almost every answer, and that's just not concrete enough for me. So I'm not going to be voting yes for the greenhouse. Not because I don't support the greenhouse, but because I just need more information to make an informed decision on it. In terms of the site work, you yeah, just everything, the well and the well. Just, I just feel like there's a lot unknown of what that's going to look like. So I'd like to see the site <laughs> personally walk on the ground where it's going to be. You know, but. doors right there. Hmm? Doors right there. <laughs> Which, which I'm sure at some point we can do too. I mean, I don't know if you're thinking before, <clears throat> yeah, before we move forward with it or during, but we can. Set I have up. no need to. It's right, right there. Right. Yeah, but yeah. We, we've seen it. I don't need to walk in or see it. But I, I, I agree. I love the greenhouse. Yeah. I, I love the whole idea. I love all of the applications of it. But that's a huge bunch because yeah, we got a building, 
but like I don't know, that's a lot of not shores um, in terms of the cost. Uh, and I mean, we keep adding things. Oh, the oh, the well, <laughs> the site work, the, like so. There's a lot there. I'm not sure. Of. I haven't decided yet. Just running power out there. Like I, I just don't know. I just need more information. I'm happy to revisit it. So, um, I did see. Uh, I was gonna look. I'm looking to Jen first, but I did see Grant's hand go up a little bit. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you. And actually, actually, did you have anything you want to add, Mason, too, from the student perspective on that? I, I think as they were, Ms. Casarini and um, Ms. Monsi was saying that it was is going to be beneficial to the students for that. But also hearing from Ms. Casarini in class, how excited she is have it and how easy it would be instead of growing plants from our window sill. So <laughs> well, there's no oh, push no, yeah. out. I want to do the studio too. Like absolutely I love all this stuff for students. I just that's part of the role of the board is to ensure the balance of what's best for kiddos and being responsible with the taxpayer money and making completely informed decisions. Yeah and I I apologize we did not go out and get three bids for everything related to the greenhouse because I didn't think it made sense to do that before we even had approval to buy the greenhouse. I am confident that we have enough money that we transferred to be able to get this the greenhouse in up and operational with all pieces. I am I, I if I said I imagine, I apologize for saying imagine. I just don't have the actual quotes in my hand yet. But the money that we transferred into the facilities project or facilities line, I am going to tell you that I will guarantee you we have enough money to do all the pieces. That greenhouse can be up with electrical and water within the money that we transferred. I just don't have a firm number for each piece of that. I think it's right remains the beyond that. Once it's up and functional, what what does it cost over 10 years or 20 years? Like that to me, that's the piece of if I'm going to add something to my home, I want to know how much is my light bill going to go up, how much is my propane going to go up, how much are my taxes going to go up? Like those, it's the longevity piece for me to know what it costs to have this greenhouse, not just putting it up. Yeah, I, I'm telling you that whenever we run electrical that first month, I don't think we're going to be able to tell the greenhouse is up and added. It's not a significant electrical use. It's not significant propane use. Do I know the exact dollar amount? No, but it's negligible. And adding supplies and like additional seeds, I mean, some of that money is already within the high school budget for their their supply line items it's just a matter of where they'll be planting things instead of will they will they be planting seeds will they be buying seeds yep they will they always have been you know there's certain things that they'll be buying as part of their their budget anyway the additional cost for this structure really is just the utilities and the utility increase is a blip. It will I be think a blip. The, the important thing is we we will not be on the board in two more weeks. Neither we're done. Yay. Um, but somebody at a deliberative session next year will come up and say, well, you threw, you know, 100 grand at that greenhouse that you switch. So it would not we would not be doing our due diligence to make it as public and transparent as possible to say we are we were very confident this money was not like it's not you know anything to use the word nefarious as i believe we were called um with so i we know how these things work in the community so coming forward and being very clear right now we are very confident we're going to do it with the money that we have if it went 20 grand over that we'd be screwed not screwed but we would be like the next board would be accused of well, you said it wasn't going to cost anything, and now look. So that's why. We're not trying to grill you, Grant. We love you. But it's the same thing. Like, they're going to go after that next board if we do not come into this with the way. Because we're educators. It's what we do. We love, like, yeah. I am stoked about this idea, and I'm so thrilled that my son will be in high school to see this as part of his education. But to balance that out, we also don't want to get the future board 
accused of something. No, I get it. The challenge is that we're trying to use general fund money. So the lead time and such is a challenge as far as like, oh, let's talk about this for the next few months. It just creates a challenge with being able to get it in right. time. That's and I understand that. And the, the research that went into this mm. has been all year in, oh, the, no. in the making. Well, I think that's why, because the other ones are all attached to other buildings there. So I understand they tried to ask the question of what does it actually cost to run this greenhouse, but the schools couldn't tell them. So that's, I guess for me, I wouldn't do this at my house if I didn't know what it was going to cost me. That's kind of where I'm at with it. Good point. So I, I think that I, I understand where you're, you're coming from with that. I think that Grant's experience with managing facilities and the type of lift that the utilities will get for this particular thing, I think that he is fully qualified to give you um, a professional opinion on what the impact will be overall. One of the things about this structure that was really attractive was the type that it was and that it's basically was it, it is a, a 30 years no maintenance kind of um kind of deal that it the and like anna had said she and alex have been working really closely both with our previous facilities director and with our current facilities director that the the annual upkeep of things around the the greenhouse and you know the the putting up of the sunshade and taking it down and and all of that are all things that can happen within our existing crew and with their their capabilities um, so this is an opportunity to do a, a expansion for student programming um, and the the timeline that is involved in this is that we do need to be able to move forward with it in order to do this. Um, you know, now is the time that we need to move forward with it. But we, the research that went into this and the questions and the look at it was not something that was rushed to get ready for you today. It's something that they've been working on uh, as a team for quite some time. But if Grant feels confident that all of the site work and everything else will fall under that 30K amount, is it underground or overhead power? Do we know? Oh, that's a good question. Do we know yet? Like, are they running, they running conduit? Are they underground? The underground? And coal will have to be put out there. Okay. Okay. And Eversource is paying so many feet, and then beyond that, the district picks it up. Like, those were the pieces I was hoping for. You know, like, it's going to cost X. <clears throat> And then going forward, you know, to run that propane heater, here's the propane, here's the electricity. The, the, the pole is going to be put up too. Is it run, it's running off of the high school or is it, it's not going to have its own meter, correct? I don't know if that's, Great. are we can getting into an area that is too much? To the, to the microphone. Thank you. I know sometimes the resource won't pay for a pole to be set if it's on our property. Right. That's, those are the things that's that I was, right. <laughs> Yeah, we had to buy one after we them down. I'm not I did not, I did not bring the facilities director. I did not bring the facilities director with me. He briefed me on all the ins and outs of what was happening, and I didn't take good notes. So I, I can tell you that the idea is to run a electrical out there. Uh, it was he and I went over the total cost and the budget. I didn't break out the budget of each piece separately because I didn't know that we were going to go down that road today. I thought we were just approving this purchase of this because it was over 50000 Um I didn't worry about that because I've looked at the numbers and I knew that we were in under the amount that we transferred. Um, but there will be electrical run out there instead of connecting to the city water which then you'd have to worry about water and sewer rates as well. It's just going to be a one-time drill in the well. It's not a huge well. It shouldn't be expensive to do a quick well. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I apologize that I have failed to give you enough information for you to feel comfortable because I, I not apologize to you. I apologize to the kids um, because I wanted to make sure you were 
prepared to be able to to make this vote. Um, other than my word, I don't know what else to give you that we will be able to do this within the money that was transferred. There, there's a big difference between a low pressure shallow well, which doesn't cost a lot, and a high pressure artesian. And I've had three artesian wells, and the cheapest one I had was seventy-five thousand dollars. So I kind of like to know how much it's going to cost for a well. Once again, with Mike. The property services, the facilities director has already had conversations with these folks. I just didn't know that you were going to need that answer tonight um, because he and I went through and he gave me. These are the prices that I've talked to folks about for the well. This is how much it's going to be for the electrical. This is how much for the footers. I didn't bring that today, not because I was trying to hide it from you. I just didn't know you were going to need it right now. And I've been a little busy with some other stuff. So my apologies. But no, we're not going to spend $75,000 drilling a well. It's, this is a well for some water to be able to water items within the greenhouse. And I mean, timeline wise, too, we're really. If, if it's not approved at this meeting, is it, you know, I mean, are we, you know, done, like, are we running out of time as far as placing the order to move forward or are we just pushing up against that June 30th deadline? Like, the June 30th is not the deadline. It's really we, earlier than that. We yeah. want to get June 30th is the fiscal deadline of having things delivered, mm -hmm. but they, the, we would like the build to start as soon as we have you know, whether that's cooperating with us uh, on that. Um, again, we'd very much like to be able to move forward with all aspects of this project uh, starting tomorrow. Um, the, we can make some suggestions. On um, part, of, I tried to reach out to my dad as soon as possible to try to get as much information as possible because I would like to see the greenhouse get put in. Um, my dad was one of the electricians that gave a quote for it, and it is not an overhead service. It is an underground service. So that would be PVC. Um, it was quite pricey, yeah, that's coming at around like $20,000, $28,000, I think, for electrical. Um, is it possible to table it to next meeting? I to, like that idea. To be able to say, like, can we just have from the facilities, Here's the estimate of the well providing they only need to go X amount of feet or right. and they don't run right the ledge. About, is it so, going to be a 50 foot well, 100 foot well? Right. Are we going to be able to bring you three complete quotes for every aspect of this in two weeks? No. But are we going to be able to oh, have wait, didn't Mark here to, to give you? I'm sorry. Didn't facilities already do that? Grant said that you spoke with they the have, facilities director. They have. All of those, we have the preliminary things. So yes, we could get Mark here to be able to answer some of your questions as far as the dollar figure for how much propane it's going to cost to to run the propane heaters on, on that. That's, that's going to be their best professional estimate and, and not a hard dollar amount. But we can see if we can give you some more of the facilities um, pieces Again, uh, we need to do that in, uh, in two weeks. I understand. Like, I, I have a full understanding that utilities might not be, again, they're probably going to be negligible. However, if we get an estimate, like right now it could be between three and $9,000 for a typical well, depending on the fee. $9,000 takes a huge chunk out of that 30 grand that's left from the purchase of the building. So I realize this is frustrating, but... I, I'm, I've got it. I've got it. We have to ask these questions. Um, we, you can get an estimate or an idea of what a site work for clearing that space will be and what the footers will be. That's not a bad estimate. Even if we don't have three bids, we can kind of troubleshoot. Hell, I just went on forms and I was like, hey, what's the average cost to drill a well? How many feet? Okay. So we can get an idea because if it's going to pull 10 grand for the well, 20 grand for the electric, that's all the money. So I just don't want the taxpayers to come back again next year to the future board and say, look at you put, putting something, you know, we, that you didn't plan for. I, 
But I also don't want us to be made out as the bad guys is taking away from the children. Yeah, that was yeah. because that's really not OK, especially with the years that both of us have put into this school district and the love and deep respect we have for this school district. That's not a fair con comment to make. But we are, as Jess has said, we built stuff. We know what it costs. So that's why I'm saying. So I want to just first off, I did not, I wasn't saying you should be held accountable. I said, I apologize. If my shortcomings mean that you don't have the information you need to be able to vote, I apologize to the kids. I wasn't trying to say that anybody from the school board is not supporting kids. I apologize. I came here with a bid because it was over 50,000. Policy says you need to approve it. I was not prepared to answer every question about every cost. That's my fault. Now, I would hope that I have some credibility with you, though, that when I say it will be in and up without me having to come back to you to transfer any more money. I will do that. It will happen. But if you need more, I just didn't document all the conversations with the other pieces. And if you need more information, then we will try to bring it back to you and hope that it that it doesn't cause a problem. I think that the community has a perception that the school board rubber stamps things, and I don't want that to happen either. I want everybody to know that we're asking the questions and doing our due diligence to bring the best for our students and our taxpayers. I just want to make that clear. The, the only thought I, I had as I was listening to the concerns that, that, you know, a few of us brought forward, I mean, other than tabling it for the March meeting, is, is there a comfort, would there be a comfort, and maybe this is a no, and I won't take it personally, but would there be a comfort level with the board if we're approving that, that first bid, but then putting, I mean, it sort of does, it does keep some accountability, putting another motion in there that we're looking at with keeping the, the expenses within a certain amount. And if they were to be over that, then we'd have to review that or the board would have to review. Hopefully that would all have to happen soon anyways, because we're, you know, making, they'd be making steps to move forward. So, I mean, they'd be looking at that aspect to bring that back, but at least we would have an approval to move forward with the project to some extent. But, you know, knowing that we'd have to just verify I mean, you know, because I think a lot of us do have trust in the business administrator with what he's saying, but at least then we also have the behind the scenes, the hard numbers that we would be able to pull out, you know, if we kind of, you know, made a motion that put some sort of a cap on it. Um, I'm not sure what your question is. I have no idea. It's basically that. approving it with, you know, within what, what the business administrator is saying is that, you know, the expenses would stay within X amount, the amount of our transfer. I'd, I'd like to move it to the next meeting, actually. We're still not going to necessarily have the exact costs on the utilities, on the gas, the electric, but I, I mean, I agree just knowing from other projects I've been experienced with, I don't think it's going to be a huge amount. I mean, I think the, the big expense is, the, is looking at what has to be covered after the purchase of we the can, greenhouse. We can come back in two weeks with Mark um, to be able to answer some of your additional questions. I would like to see a rough order of magnitude on a high price item, which, which could potentially be the well and the power. Uh, I've, I've seen too many buildings in the military that were built without prop facilities uh, being sculpted out. And guess what? The buildings are still there because they couldn't use them. So when we come up, I don't know if we can vote on that too, but we're essentially going to table that for the March meeting. And then after we, after we hear from the facilities, we'll sort of vote. I think we've discussed yeah, it. I think so too. Yeah. Um, do we, do we want a vote to table it or is just knowing that we're tabling it? You're not on action. I hope Okay. Too. Right. Right. I will uh, mention that when we come to it. So propane, um, Based on what Grant was proposing too, do we feel comfortable giving him the the ability to, you know, if he when he's shopping out 
looking at rates, if he finds a rate that's at the amount that the it's going to be either a dollar seventy one point seven three eight or less per gallon, you know, yep. to give him yeah. the power to yeah. lock yes. that in. Yeah. Okay, so we'll look. I'll look for that um, during action items. Um, any no nothing else on that. We're good there. So scholarship donation. Um, any further questions, discussion on that? Yeah. Adam's amazing. Yeah. Awesome. Agreed. When, when, when he gets the locked in price, it's oh, great okay. when the price goes up and we're locked in. But what happens when the price goes down? Well, that's well, the gamble you take. That's, that's how it works. That price, right? right. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Most of the time, that's the way it works. And this is a that is, in there. that is true. However, we have data of what happens when we don't have a locked in price and we are at the mercy of the market rates. And it is not. It, it does not work out favorably. Oh, I understand. It's damn if you do, damn if you don't. I understand. But uh, I would prefer a locked in price. I mean, the dice, see where it goes. Okay. That's that's what he would be doing. He'd be, yeah. He would be, we're giving, we're going to have a motion to give him the ability to lock in. Yeah. And, I understand that locking a lower price, I believe, right? Right. And, and it's up to, I mean, every contract is different. Oftentimes, once you're locked in, you're locked in with that. So if it goes under what we're locked in at, you know, we're still at that rate unless we have taken out, you know, extra, like an extra insurance on that, which not every company offers. Does that help, Mike? So it'll be locked in, yes. And hopefully at that or less, you know, you know, with trusting in Grant's ability to negotiate. We'd like to move that we take a five minute break. Can we finish discussion first? Um, is it, do you need to run to the make your restaurant break? Five minute break to um, okay. digest. You want to do it immediate or do you want to do it at the end of board discussion? How about now? <laughs> okay. I mean, if you want to do it now, we can do it now. So, uh, we'll, um, we'll do five minutes, so um, we'll end to what we need to do, and then we'll come back and finish out. So, five minutes. Just remind that, everybody that the, yeah. both cameras are still on. And I'm trying to on. through tonight, aren't they? Excuse me. On a good note, daylight savings time in a few weeks. We can have the uh, school board candidates at the next meeting introduce themselves, or we're just going to wait for the meet and greet. Typically, we don't have them to a meeting to introduce themselves. It's not necessarily appropriate, but the meet and greet will be Tuesday, March 5th. So at the, at the Legion, and the chambers in charge of that. So there's a couple of signs there. Yeah, it's beyond our hands until after the election. They can introduce themselves at the public comment. That's why we have public comment. Um, all set, Paul? Yeah. Okay. And so I think we're, we're, we're good on propane at this point. We're good on the scholarship donation as far as discussion items. So the per diem rate, any questions on that? Okay. Um, and then community outreach. The, the letter that I kind of distributed, it was draft letter. It won't be offended if there's major changes to it. Um, if I did put copies in front of each of you, um, I think it'd be nice to get something out more as a thank you. So thank you to the voters for attending and a thank you for voting. Um, and I kind of recapped quickly some of what we put in our last letter, but I'm open to ideas. 
Um, so what's the goal of the letter? Again, I think um, as a board, we can discuss the, just thank, making making sure the voters know we're thanking them for their participation in the deliberative okay. session, the process, and so voting. Thanking them. Yep. Um, and just and it's just kind of reinforcing educationally, you know, where we're at and what we put in that first letter that we wrote. If you remember, I should have attached it. One, so the the last you're concluding paragraph yep. references the proposed budget, the trust funds, and the warrant articles, but those aren't all addressed in the body of the text. So Correct. if the goal is to just say thank you, then we can introduce like, this is just to thank you for your participation. I also want to give a little bit of clarity to the proposed budget, the trust funds, and the warrant articles. Just give the facts of those and then conclude it. Okay. I think like that letter that came in as correspondence, people, this, it gets a little in the weeds. And I think people just want kind of just the facts. These are the warrant articles. Here's why they're necessary. Thanks for coming. Here's the budget. Here's why it is the way it is in very brief. Do you have, I, I, I mentioned the budget. I think what I didn't mention until the end is the trust funds. Um, do, you, are, do you have a suggestion for that, or is that something? Well, in the you're, end, you're asking folks to vote on the proposed budget, the trust funds, and the warrant articles. So a description about the three of those, like one very small paragraph for each, could very easily make this just a five-paragraph intro, go through the three pieces, and do it. Probably adding, I mean, it's what's here so far with the budget, adding a paragraph on the trust funds and the warrant. Right, this whole thing is about the budget. It's right. four paragraphs on the budget. Correct. And I just think that's too much. Like it's been presented over and over and over. And so I think one paragraph succinctly outlining the budget, one doing the trust funds and one doing the warrant articles and then concluding it is fine. <coughs> if our goal is to really just get some very straightforward information for folks heading to the polls. So with in the interest of time too, um, from here, I mean, do we continue, like if, you know, I was gonna ask for your help with this too? I know um, the problem is I'm just like completely out straight. I don't know if Paul or Mike has time, like I am sort of drowning at work. <laughs> and if we can, if we make, if, like if I take it on with another board member to make those changes, is that something, does the board want me to bring that back? Or if I bring it back following that outline, is the board okay with, with us submitting it? It needs to be truncated, but can, can you inform my edit fee? <laughs> Not sure if I can cover that. You, you didn't get that, you didn't get that check in the mail yet? <laughs> um, is that something you were willing to help with, Mike? Yeah, I can do a hand with it. Um, and so basically, yeah. So, we're going to make it a suggestion. little bit more. Yeah, go. So just, you have another, your next meeting is in two weeks. At that point, you're been really tight as far as getting this published prior to. Mm -hmm. Would the board be comfortable with giving Mike and Chris some guiding notions and then authorizing them to move the letter forward on your behalf prior to your next yes, meeting? Yes, as long as it's okay. edited. Like, yeah. Yes. What what Mike and I can do too is. You so know, how about how about if we we a couple of really concrete yeah. directions from the board for Mike and and Chris? So yeah. So again, I think one paragraph about the budget, one about the trust funds, and one about the warrant articles, and just ensure that your intro introduces those topics and your conclusion wraps it up. Like just really sure. succinct, easy. Um, you know, for the general public yeah. to be able to read and access. Yeah. Just send a quick email with it and send it back. Unless okay. with a lesson. I can I can give you a phone call too once I've sent that too. Um yeah. and we can like that. So you work on it's three parts, right? Yeah, just a nice five paragraph essay. Yeah, because the whole middle section is all fluff. I mean it's yes. so, so common knowledge that the that the voters already know, so Okay. That's what, yeah, I won't be offended. I was looking for honest advice. It's a cumulative piece. Yeah, I appreciate the efforts. I, I just think we're really, we're trying to write to the public and it's written like it's being, 
given to a school board member, you know. Mm. So okay. just more general terms. So if we do that, um, Mike and I, and I can always, uh, if I if I can, I know that the SAU is busy, but if I if we send a copy by at once, Mike and I have looked at. Is that something you're okay with? I'm that? happy to fact check to make sure that all of the information is is accurate. Um, but the the letter obviously is is from the board, is from the board and and not from us. And I don't want to overstep on that. But I'd be more than happy to uh, fact check for accuracy. Uh, well, if, if I do send it out to just be careful, don't reply to me by email. Um, individually, you can call me because then it's one to one, it's not the entire board because you know, okay. we don't want it to be a public meeting. Okay. Um, but more or less, what Mike and I come up with that's fact checked by the SAU will. Do you want me to use my VPN? <laughs> we should be okay. In, um, in action items, you just uh, add an additional yeah. one to authorize Chris and Mike to finalize the letter on the board's behalf to send out prior to the next meeting. Cool. And actually, yeah, so if, if uh, someone other than Mike and I wants to make that motion, that way it's not coming from us. Yeah. Uh, so anything else on that? Next one, so board observers at the polls, which is, I know that the elections after the next board meeting, but I at least wanted to get it out on the calendar. I know that, again, I know two of us our two board members are not going to be on the board. Um, yeah, yeah, and uh, don't, don't celebrate too loudly yet. Um, but typically what we found is that it's helpful to have a board member inside the polls, not campaigning, but inside the polls to be available if someone has a question or something like that um, in a board member role, not in a campaign role. Can I make another suggestion that yep. maybe people Think about that and come prepared after having That's checked your schedule. Um, so at the next meeting, you can just quickly make the decisions as to who's covering which yep. shifts at which polls. So it's and again, it's between Deering and Hillsborough. Who I don't get up for nine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but yeah. Think think about what your availability is and bring it then to the, the first meeting in March. Um, and so that brings us to unless there's anything else under board discussion. Um, anything else anyone wants to bring up? Public comment. Is there anyone from the public that wishes to speak for, I won't say a second time because we didn't have anyone for the five minutes or less? Um, going once, twice, three times, uh, eight o'clock. Public comment. It's been rolling and it's been offered. So moving on to action items. Um, so. I will make a motion to authorize the business manager to execute um, a propane contract that is uh, competitive and um, you want as, so moved. Yeah, uh, I was gonna say and, and yeah, competitive and we're pointing back to the board. Heidi makes that Heidi seconds it. Any further discussion or questions? And so all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And no abstentions. So five to zero. Zero, um, and the greenhouse bid. We're going to table that. Does the board want to vote on tabling that? Um, I make a motion that we table it to the following meeting with more information about site work. Second. Okay. All seconds. Sure. All, all those in favor. Aye. 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 And no opposed. No abstentions. Um, accepting the scholarship donation from the Ter Therese Dugan Broadwick Scholarship. So moved. Second. And, yeah. Um, any further discussion on that? Um, no, I, I agree with it. I want it. I want to add something to it later on, though. You can. Paper. That's not what we're voting That's on. That's not Mike. what we're voting on. We're voting on the the scholarship oh. from Patty Parento's aunt. Which scholarship? The. It's the King, right? When she yes. Spoke. Yeah, I know. I understand. So we can't amend this. We either accept it or we don't. I don't want to amend that. I want to add something. I want to add an endorsement to it. I can't do that. Oh, yeah. I, I don't, I don't no, know. You want to just say, you, I mean, we can say that if it's a good job, congratulations. Oh, yeah, pretty much. Oh, yeah. Okay. So that's now. now it's no, it's just a positive that. affirmation. That's okay. I got two master's degrees in education. You think I'm going to deny this? <laughs> I don't know. So yeah, that's good. I mean, yes, yeah, definitely. It's it's very gracious of her and her family um, for doing this and setting this up. Um, so um, yeah, any anything else on that? We're we're good. Yeah. We're ready to vote. 
I think that we can yeah. adjourn. Right. Right. Just a discussion on the motion. So all those right. in favor? Aye. 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 And no opposed and no abstentions. So five zero zero. And I will make a motion to increase the per diem rate for substitute nurses to two hundred and sixty-five dollars. That is per is that day. Per, per day. Thank, thank you. I will second that. Um, any further discussion on that? Okay, so moving to vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No opposed. And no abstentions. So five zero zero. I will um, make a motion to authorize Chris Bober and Michael Kenny to finalize the letter on behalf of the board being fact checked by Dr. Jennifer Crawford. Second. Okay. Thank you for the second, Paul. Uh, Jess makes a motion. Paul seconds. And all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And so, and no abstentions, five, zero, zero. And then, so we're just going to bring our calendars um, to, with our availability for polls. Uh, any, any, do we need, let's see, no other mark on items? In the interest of time, um, I can wait until next, our next meeting in two weeks for the non public. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And any, yeah, so we don't need the non public. And no other, so is there anyone that wants to make the. Uh, Motion to adjourn. Adjournment to the evening. Second. Second. Third. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> it's a support. So 500 adjourns at 8.04 p.m. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Thank you for your support. Um, time for you walk. Oh, there it is. Mark. Can you hit the switch on the wall? Enough to hit the switch. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. The owl is still my party. Oh, yes. Thank you. Do you want some more questions? Thank you very much. Well, I think I'll make it up. Okay. Thanks, though. You're welcome.